when things are going tough and we think that, well, you know what, I'm, I'm facing this all by myself. It could be further from the truth. The truth is the same one who saved us is the one who are always with us, the one who continue to walk with us through this life. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Um, let's grab our Bible right now and declare this and mean it from the bottom of our hearts. Let's go. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word that will change my life forever. All right. We are concluding the ministries of Jesus. Now, these are, you know, the foundational ministries of Jesus. Obviously, there's more that he came to do, okay? But uh, we thank God for this uh, passage where Jesus stood up and declared that he is the Messiah. And in it, he revealed to us his ministry. And so uh, I thank God to have another opportunity to bring you the word. And today we're going to conclude with anointing, the anointing. Um, so with that, let us read from Luke 4, 18. And let us all read loudly together. Let us read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has promised me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. In the King James Version, it's those who are bruised, right? And we study that. And it, I, I didn't add verse 19 here. It's also to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, if you look in, in many, many upbringing uh, through church, even religious upbringing, when we talk about anointing, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, there are people who teach others to fear the Holy Spirit. And you can't wonder why, except, you know, the manifestation sometimes get somebody video something and put it on YouTube, and next thing you know, People are fearful, and people begin to teach about being fearful of the Holy Spirit. But today, we're definitely not going to do that. And um, unfortunately, because of that, many people miss out on what God has for us. And, you know, for example, there was a, a Vietnam vet who, um, who's relative to a well-known preacher, and he, he shared this story. He said that his uncle fought in Vietnam and, and, and re, was recognized for his bravery over there. But when he came back, he, he suffered from an extreme case of PTSD. And, you know, when you suffer like that, any loud noises like a car backfire, you know, would, would trigger uh, really intense um, rage. Um, he felt shameful about his life uh, in war. Um, and so he came back, and, and thank God he, he gave his life to the Lord, right? But he was still suffering, you know. He was still suffering. Unfortunately, he was at a church where they teach to be fearful of the Holy Spirit. And not only that, but they teach that, you know, Jesus came to save us so that one day we would go to heaven, and that's it. He doesn't do anything else for us here on earth during this time. So he came home, you know, after uh, he met with some people at church out of the encouragement of his wife. And I'm going to uh, warn you that, you know, it's a sad ending, but it illustrates something um, that we need to be aware of. So he came home and he told his wife, you know, uh, I went to meet with some people about my problem, and basically, Jesus can't help me. Can you imagine, you know, coming to church, someone tells you that, yeah, Jesus saves you, but he can't help you with your issues right now. And of course, he, he, he told his wife, and, and he was, you know, saddened and went upstairs and took his life. And so I share that story is because there are people out there who, who teach us to be fearful of the Holy Spirit, and they do not believe in healing anymore. Healing is something that was for the first church. The move of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit is for the first church. It does not exist anymore. You basically just have to suck it up and wait until you die and go to heaven, and everything will be fine. 
then. You know, and so um, there are people you might encounter, whether if good intention or not, they would ask you, does your church teach about the Holy Spirit? Or do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Right? We, we may have met people like that. Because why? They came from that background. That they're fearful of the Holy Spirit. So other people, is like they want to know because they want to be a part of a spirit-filled church. But when you ask a question like, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? It's kind of like, how can I not? The Holy Spirit is the Trinity. He's God. You're asking me if I believe in God? But the question that we should ask is, what is the root of that question? Why would someone ask a question like that? Well, I'll tell you why. Because we've been reading what Jesus said, right? In the scripture we just read. Jesus said, this is who I really am. I'm the person that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm the person who the Spirit of the Lord anointed me. I'm the person who preached the gospel to the poor, bring salvation, right? I'm the person who will heal you of your brokenhearted, mend you of your hurt. I'm the person who proclaim liberty, create freedom. I'm the person who give you sight, allow you to see the truth. I'm the person who set you free. And so Jesus wants us to be anointed. And we're going to look into that word anointed, but also look into the word baptized as well. Okay? So one of the most important ministry of Jesus is to anoint us of the Holy Spirit. And we are more familiar with the term baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So if you're not familiar with this, when we say be filled with the Holy Spirit, it's the effect after you have been baptized but by the Holy Spirit. If I can give you uh, an illustration, it would be like um, if I have a, a tall glass of water right here, right? If I let it, the water sit here for a long period of time, let's say the water represents the Holy Spirit in our lives, okay? We were filled with the Holy Spirit once upon a time. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's not about your flesh. It's no longer about the need of your flesh. It's about the presence of God in your life so much that you have love for everybody. You can find forgiveness for people where you normally wouldn't. You would exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. And, and because you're overflowing, right, the water comes out overflowing to the side of the glass that when people come in contact with you, they, they get wet, right? They're impacted by you. Yes, you. Some people might sit there and say, me? Oh, pastor, if only you know me. <laughs> I would say, brothers and sisters, if you only know me. <laughs> but if you leave that glass sitting here for a long period of time, you know what happened is the water eventually evaporate until it's empty. So being filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized by the Holy Spirit, cannot be a one time. Oh, yes, that day... You know, we gather together, we pray to receive, we ask that Jesus would baptize us. And I'm going to go in later in more detail what that means. Baptize us with the Holy Spirit. I'm so excited. And then the next day, you go, you're with your parent or you're with your sibling, and, and you find yourself yelling at them, fighting with them. Well, guess what? You were filled the day before. But the day after, you were not. So it's a constant filling, right? Because once you're dry, there's no more water. Then if someone come in contact with you, it's just the glass outside. 
They don't get wet until you're filled with the Holy Spirit to overflowing. Then when they touch you, they come in contact with you, they're wet. Something impacted them, right? Something by the fruit of the Spirit impacted them. So let's look at anointing. The background, the word anointing um, is to rub, you know, to rub. I can't help but thinking like when you make a steak, right, or some uh, uh, rib roast or something, you rub it, you know, you massage it with, with all the spices, you know. Uh, that's why I call it the rub, right? <laughs> a rub to smear thoroughly, right, to smear thoroughly. Uh, and in the Hebrew, it's to pour, right, to pour, to pour. So let's look at some scripture. And this, by all means, not all the scripture about anointing, okay? This is only some, okay? You can read for yourself. There's many. In Genesis 28, 18, we see here, then, then this is when Jacob anointed a stone, right? Um, then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and pour oil on top of it. It's oil, right? Oil. You'll hear a lot about being anointed with oil in the Old Testament as well as the New, New Testament. But in the Old Testament, it's almost like um, when you pour oil um, on something, someone, like you basically, you recognize this person to be used by God. Okay? And this person have been imparted with whatever he or she needs to do the work of the Lord. So in Exodus 29, 7, it says here, and this is when Aaron was anointed, the priest, and you shall take the anointing oil, pour it on his head, and anoint him. Okay, so anointing a person. First Samuel 10 and 1, then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head. This is Samuel anointing Saul, right, who's the first king of Israel. So you can see back then that's how you basically bless someone into the position like as important like you know the king of a nation right david david was anointed as well so it's important to recognize anointing and then matthew 26 7 it says a woman came to him him meaning jesus capital h here having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table Okay, and so this is another way uh, she was preparing his body, right? He was going to die, right? He was going to die. And so um, a lot of people believe the amount is about equivalent to 16 ounces. So you can, if you have a water bottle, that's how much oil she poured on his head. Okay, so, um, and many of us are used to people praying over us. They, they dab a little bit of oil, you know, they put it on your forehead because they, that's scriptural, you know, call you, if you're sick, you know, call your elders and they will anoint, you know, all on you and pray for your healing, right? Uh, and you will be healed. And, and so we're used to seeing that. We're used to smelling the oil. Like uh, I remember, um, you know, there are certain services uh, where people are called to the altar and then you come up and the pastor would dab a little bit of oil, you know, and kind of put on your forehead. Well, <laughs> baptism of the Holy Spirit is, can you imagine, instead of a dab, Jesus will pour all of it on you. Would you prefer a dab or everything? <laughs> right? Right? We want everything that Jesus had for, had for us. Amen? So, if we look at Acts um, 10.38, um, this is where God anointed Jesus. It says here, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, right? With power. That means he rubbed, he smeared, right? He poured upon Jesus uh, the Holy Spirit and with power, right? Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So Jesus was anointed, right? The Holy Spirit. So we see here, if Jesus... Right? And, and I need to back up a little bit here. Um, uh, for the sake of some of you may not be aware, 
you know, we celebrate Christmas. Jesus came down in the manger as a baby. He's human, and he's also God, okay? So when he came here, he was all human. He, he emptied himself in Philippians chapter 2, 5 through 9. You can read that. He emptied himself of all the attributes. Because why? He wants to walk this earth as a human, right? He wants to be tempted like we are tempted. And so when he walked this earth as human, he needed the Holy Spirit. He needed to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. He needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, so he can do what he was called to do. If Jesus needs the Holy Spirit, do you think we need the Holy Spirit? If you're not sure, then you could wonder why you have not been an effective witness of Jesus. Because you're dealing with a lot of people here on earth who may know you, who may not know you. And unless you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will not be ready. Because you will be discouraged by how people respond. Even Jesus needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Because he was dealing with people like me, people like you, who question, who challenge, who wants to pick a fight for bringing up the name of Jesus. This world does not like the name of Jesus. This world does not think that we need to be saved. So for you to convince others that they need to be saved, I would say, Holy Spirit, fill me. <laughs> fill me afresh because I want to do what you call me to do. I don't want to rely on my flesh because if I rely on my flesh, I might punch someone out because they're not hearing me. You know, I might scream at them, curse at them. So if Jesus needs the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then we also need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? So in Luke 24, 49, it says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And this was for the disciple. This is for us. Jesus has been filled with the Holy Spirit. Now he's about to ascend into heaven. But before he ascended into heaven, he made sure that we tarry, we wait patiently. We cannot think that we can do things with our own flesh. You know, every time when you start to think like, oh, I shouldn't say that. Oh, I shouldn't do that. What would they think of me? That's your flesh. That's your flesh. Always unsure about yourself. There's no confidence. Meanwhile, people around you are dying in their sin. And Jesus said, witness to them. Share with them my love, why I'm here. But we're all worried about our image our place in society. We worry about our own thing. Oh, you, you'll find out soon that your own thing, whatever it is, your work, your job, your school, will come to nothing. Do you think someone in heaven will greet you one day and say, hey, congratulations on your degree. <laughs> hey, congratulations on your promotion down there. <laughs> no. I hope they would say something like, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having the courage, the bonus to share with me about the love of God. Thank you for helping me when I, no one would. Thank you for spending the time to listen to me, to pray for me. Thank you for making a way where there seemed to be no way for the situation I was in. 
that's what we want to hear. They're not going to ask you about your athletic accomplishment, musical accomplishment, academic accomplishment. They're not going to ask you about that. They're going to thank you because you took the time. And you, because you were filled with the Holy Spirit, you didn't care about what people think. You just know that this person needs to hear about Jesus. And you knew that that was the only opportunity you would have for this person. And you pray and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And there's no fear left. There's no what if question in your mind. All you know is this person needs Jesus. So endued means to sink into, to clothe yourself, oneself, like in tight clothing, right? Tight clothing. I tried tight clothing. It doesn't work, okay? <laughs> it doesn't work for me. <laughs> you know, endued is kind of like you pour, like someone wears such tight clothing is like you pour yourself into that clothing to fit, right? Uh, you have to be fluid before you can get into that. But the Lord wants us to sink into, to, to be clothed with power from on high. So the point is, if Jesus did what he did by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And that power is available to you. And when you get that power... You can heal people. You can help people. Heal people who are oppressed by the devil. Who would hate for you to believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit? If you know that Jesus needs the Holy Spirit and now he wants you to have the Holy Spirit, who would come against that? Hmm? Anyone? The devil, right? The devil is fearful of you being filled with the Holy Spirit because there's such boldness in you, there's so much love in you that he can't usurp you for his doing. He can't talk you out of, oh, don't talk to this guy or don't talk to this gal. They got everything. You know, they're rich, they got cars, they got houses. Look at the way they dress. Look at the nice shoes, Air Jordan, you know, the best product. He can't because you're so filled with love. You see beyond the outward appearance. You see the heart of a person who's lost, who needs God. And I believe the only way you can see that is when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Or else you'll have experiences, you have thoughts of the flesh that say, this one is not worthy of being saved. So the devil is the one who's fearful. So that's why he causes many, many, even believers, to teach to be fearful of the Holy Spirit. The devil would want us to think that any church that talks about the power of the Holy Spirit is weird, goofy, and strange. Right? And to stay away from those church that talks about the Holy Spirit. So, let's look at baptism of the Holy Spirit in the gospel. So, for the four book of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four gospels. In those four books, we hear about Jesus' birth, Jesus' death, his resurrection. But we also hear about the baptism of the Holy Spirit in all four books. Okay? So it's not something that is an end note. It's something that Jesus really wants us to understand. Matthew 3, 11, it says, I indeed baptize you with water. This is John the Baptist speaking here. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he, I mean Jesus, who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So that's 
another of Jesus' ministry, and we're talking about anointing today, synonymous is what? He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Mark 1.8 says, I indeed baptize, again, John the Baptist is speaking, I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Luke 3.16 says, John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And John 1.33 I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So do you think that one of Jesus' ministry is to baptize us with the Holy Spirit? Yes. Yes, right? So baptize, uh, in, in the Greek word, it's baptismo, baptism. Zo, baptizo, okay? To dip repeatedly, okay? Anyone dip repeatedly? Right? In some food item, you can't dip repeatedly. Because <laughs> it's not going to be crunchy, right? You got to dip and take it out. Um, anyone you make pho, pho before, pho noodle, right? You can't be dipping pho repeatedly because... <laughs> Then you'll get chowder, okay? You just dip it, wait, and then take it out, okay? Don't dip it repeatedly. But here, baptizo uh, is to dip repeatedly, to immerse, to submerge, to overwhelm. Let me read this passage. Uh, maybe Hang, uh, Hannah may have it up here. The clearest example that shows the meaning of baptizo is a text from the Greek poet and physician Nicander, who lived about 200 B.C. before Christ. It is a recipe for making pickles. Nicander says, in order to make pickle, the vegetable should first be dipped into boiling water and then baptized or baptizo in the vinegar solution. All right? Brings back some kids' church memory here. <laughs> The fact of baptizing the vegetable produces a permanent change. A permanent change. So, hey, you have a clear understanding what baptism means, right? And every time you think of being baptized by the Holy Spirit, a pickle will appear in, in your memory. Um, do not be afraid of him, the Holy Spirit. He is a wonderful person who was sent to us by the Lord Jesus when he ascended to heaven. Did you know that? When Jesus went to heaven to be with the Father, he said, wait for the Holy Spirit. Okay? So Jesus, last word, quickly here, Jesus is available to help you with the five foundational ministry of Jesus, salvation, mending, healing, freedom, and anointing. So, but the anointing, being baptized by the Holy Spirit, needs to be done repeatedly, okay? Be done repeatedly. Acts um, 2, uh, the Holy Spirit came, right? Remember from the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit came, and on the upper room, 120 people were filled with the Holy Spirit, right? They begin, begin speaking in tongue. Acts 4, Peter and John were sent to prison, right? And then towards the end of that chapter... Uh, they were released, and, and then this, this verse here in verse 31, it says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. These were the people who were filled with the Holy Spirit in ch Act chapter 2. And then they were filled with the Holy Spirit again. So it tells us that being filled with the Holy Spirit is not a one time. You should know that because that day or that period of time when you were filled with the Holy Spirit, you sense the freedom. You fill with love for people. You're on fire. You want to share the gospel with the people. You're so excited. And then the next day, you start dealing with your brothers and sister and you get into a fight. Then you wish you were filled with the Holy Spirit again. Psalm 92, 10, David said here, By my horn, which is strength, 
means strength. By my horn, you have exalted like a wow ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Fresh oil. We need fresh oil. Amen? We need fresh oil because we're on empty or we think we have fresh oil, but we have some other oil in us. And that's how we can't witness to people. We feel like we're a failure. So the last word of a person is very important. And we're about to read the last word of Jesus. I'm going to read a collection of scripture here from the message translation, okay? And I'm going to end with a statement, a scripture in Acts that says these were the last words of Jesus. So let me read this. If you can listen. I will talk to the Father, and he'll provide you another friend so that you will always have someone with you. The friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. So let me say it again. This truth, it's better for you that I leave. If I don't leave, the friend won't come. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't handle them now. But when the friend comes, the spirit of the truth, he will take you by the hand and guide you into all the truth there is. As they met and ate meals together, he told them that they were on no account to leave Jerusalem, but must wait for what the Father promised. The promise you heard from me, John baptized with wa in water, you will, ba will be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and soon. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the world. These were his last words. So do you think being filled with the Holy Spirit, being witness of him to the world is important to Jesus? If we believe that the last word before someone speaks to us is important. This is very important to him. So it's my prayer that everyone who hears this message today, online or in person here, that you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Can we stand right now? You know, it's, it's nothing magical. It's something that Jesus wants us to ask him. You know, Jesus is a gentleman, and so is the Holy Spirit. He will not force anything on us, or do we want to do something to validate him? No. He's offering something to us because he knows that we need the filling of the Holy Spirit. So as you bow your head and close your eyes right now, I want you to ask Jesus, ask him, will you baptize me with the Holy Spirit? And then I want you to say to him, Lord Jesus, I want to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. I need a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit today. Fill me afresh, O Lord. Lord, I pray over my brothers and sisters, even myself, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit who comes and comfort us, who comes and guide us into all truth, who bring to us things that we do not know, things that are coming, who give us boldness, who give us the fruit that would make a person who's hopeless be encouraged, be lifted up again. Lord, thank you for filling us afresh today. Can you thank him right now? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for 
filling us afresh today. Thank you, Lord, for you know we need your Holy Spirit. And help remind us, Lord, each day that we need to be filled with your Spirit. So that we would be impactful witnesses of you, Lord Jesus. That you came to save, you came to mend, you came to heal, you came to set free, and you came to anoint, to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. We thank you and we pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.